What's up, guys? Well, I've been living in the van for about six months now. And as you can see, not much has changed. driving but look at this sunset I mean wow I mean wow right am I right I mean wow so yeah it's been six months since I a uh, little over six months since I started living in the van and um, you know in those six months I've been able to do a lot of stuff that I would, wouldn't would have been able to do otherwise, and I think it might be a good idea, or it might be cool if I go over that stuff, you know, it's sort, of, sort of as a list, sort of as a display of things that I've been able to do, you know, since moving into van, just to sort of compare and contrast, and I don't want to brag in any way here, because that's not, not really about that, but just to sort of display, you know, if even to myself, like what, you know, what I've been able to do, uh, you know since living in a van. So so to start, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of backstory. So I moved to San Francisco about three years ago and lived with a lady in her living room in Haight-Ashbury. And, um, you know, I was paying about... I lived there, we moved, I moved here with my friend Trey and, into her living room and we were paying about $900 total. We split it, we split it for uh, her living room. And that was fine, that was kind of cool, but eventually we decided we wanted to get our own place. You know, after a few months, we decided it was time to sort of settle down into the San Francisco scene. You know, if we were going to move here, we needed to get our own place and start start paying for it. So, we started looking around for places and uh, going to, uh, you know, going to open houses and stuff like that. And it was nuts. I mean, we'd show up and there'd be like... 15 other people waiting in line with like tuxedos on and like suits and you know they'd have like their resumes and like their you know applications all printed out and like a bunch of like referrals and all this other stuff and I was like wow what I was used to is you know you go to the apartment complex you fill out a little application and then they call you back in like a week and tell you whether or not you got the thing but yeah it was it's very competitive out here and judging by the looks of these people you know, if I'm judging by looks, which is probably not the greatest way to judge, but I mean, sometimes you can just tell, but these guys are wearing like suits and stuff and like really nice shoes. And I'm like, okay, uh, yeah, we don't stand a chance here. So, and then you start thinking about like the prices of the apartments and you get into like the, the thousand dollar range and stuff like that. And it's like, do I really want to pay, you know, seven, $800 for like a room? Not really. So in between staying at this lady's house in hate and trying to find places we eventually just you know we're sort of done and uh my friend trey ended up moving back to missouri and uh but i wanted to stay i was gonna start to go to school and all this other stuff so i um lived with a friend for about a week and during that time my other friend chris who was also from missouri who you've seen in the videos prior to this uh, moved in and we started sharing rent just to make things a little easier and uh, we lived with a friend for about a week or so and then after that we moved into this residential hotel that was called Potter Hotel it was downtown sort of Soma area of San Francisco and you know out of, out of all the residential hotels I got to say it was not bad um, the worst part about it was the bed bugs. You know, you'd wake up and you'd have little bumps on your arms, little red bumps, and then sometimes you could even see the bed bugs crawling around in the mattresses and stuff like that. 
and uh, you know they don't spread disease or anything like that. They don't really cause harm, you know. But the thing is that you wake up with these red bumps and they itch and stuff, and it's just kind of gross, you know. You you're, you're trying to sleep and you don't know if bugs are crawling all over you and stuff, and it's just kind of nasty. But other than that, Potter Hill Hotel is pretty nice. If you need a place to stay and you're not too scared of bed bugs, go to Potter Hotel. You know, I mean the it was pretty, it was clean for the price. Uh, there wasn't a lot of sketchy stuff going on inside the hotel itself. Outside, on the other hand, was a little, a little weird in the Soma. You know, I, I saw a girl peeing off the hood of a car once, uh, and then I, in the broad daylight, middle of the day, and uh, I saw somebody shooting up once out there. Uh, saw a guy like sleeping in a wheelchair just in the middle of the hallway. I don't know, there was some weird stuff that happened there, but overall the Potter Hotel experience was actually not too bad. Uh, but after Potter, um, also I had a friend that moved to San Francisco for a little while named Dalton, and who he also lived in Potter Hotel, and that was just kind of a rough time, you know, we were kind of in the middle of trying to find places, like all throughout living at Potter we were just looking for apartments pretty much, that was the whole... That was the whole Potter expedition, was just trying to find a place to live in San Francisco and just barely holding on, like a sliver. And, um, you know, I wish I would have thought about living in the van back then because, geez, that would have been such a solution for, you know, all the hassle that we had to go through. But anyways, um, so after Potter, I moved into this place uh, on Fell and Lower Hate with a friend named Josh. And that place was pretty good. I knew it was going to be temporary, though, so that was a little unfortunate. Uh, I stayed there for about two months, and it was actually a really decently priced place. Uh, and then after that, a friend of mine named Chris, another Chris, so many Chris's, uh, told me that he had a house available for rent. And uh, it was his family's old house. You know, he lived in it when he was younger. And, he, you know, it was fairly reasonably priced, so I called up my friend Chris. <laughs> And uh, my other friend Paula, there's a huge truck right here, I'll wait for it to pass. Cool. So anyways, I called up my friend Chris and I called up my friend Paula and we decided to go in on this house. It was a two bed, it's a two bedroom house. Um, me and Chris agreed to share the, the back room, which is freaking huge and we were gonna split it into two bedrooms and which never happened. And then Paula was gonna have the front room. And that worked out great. I ended up staying in that house for pretty much almost two years. And that's the house I lived in before I moved into the van. So that's a little bit of backstory. And um, so, you know, while all this stuff was going on, while all this, uh, you know, trying to figure out a house situation and just like, oh, I got to go to work because I got to go home and I got to pay the rent. And I don't have any money, so we're gonna, I'm going to eat noodles and make, uh, you know, gonna make some spaghetti again tonight or some ramen noodles and eat some bread you know while all this stuff was going on I didn't really aside from starting school which eventually happened after I moved into the house uh, I didn't really have a lot of creative stuff going on you know I wasn't uh, I wasn't really doing anything with my life to, to further you know to further uh, you know my craft or, or uh, improve myself other than just living here and, and working and paying rent and that was that was pretty much it and after a while that just got really uh just really drew, drove me into the ground because i was like what's the purpose of this you know why am i even here if i'm not able to do if i'm not able to do what i love why am i even here what's the point in doing all this stuff and then eventually i just got tired of it and so i i moved out into the van and so here's a display of things that i've been able to do compared to not really doing anything except paying rent uh, since I moved into the van. So, and like I said, I'm not trying to brag here. I'm just, I just want to display these things, you know, just, just to compare and contrast. So, I've been able to go on a couple different vacations or trips, you know. Um, I've been able to go to Florida, Missouri, uh, Los Angeles twice. I had never been there. Uh, Santa Cruz twice, uh, Pinnacles, uh, traveling up north, you know, um, those are trips I would have never been able to afford if I lived in the house unless somebody bought my ticket or, or rented a car for me and then paid for the gas. 
it was like a not it was like a non-existent thing living in the house and since living in the band since being able to save money instead of spending it on really expensive san francisco rent you know i've been able to actually go out and do fun stuff and like and uh, experience experience a little bit you know experience uh so but then other than that i've been able to also uh been able to buy a new laptop uh been able i bought a new hookah i bought a wetsuit you know those are all fairly expensive things that i never would have been able to put down the money for when i lived in the house you know it was very sort of paycheck to paycheck and then and then just uh just it's just time to like be creative you know uh I've kind of noticed that over the the course of the the time that I've lived in the house, you know, I, I didn't really do anything video editing wise to to improve my work, you know, not a noticeable difference at least. I mean, there was some, definitely some experimentation and stuff that went on that probably helped uh, develop some sort of a style or some sort of an aesthetic or something. But a lot of the stuff that I was doing was really simple. It was just taking images and taking videos and making collages and sort of stuff like that to the to music and sort of figuring out how how video and audio works together to sort of bring out different feelings and moods and stuff like that. And I a lot of that stuff was probably really really important to learn. But overall, you know, I wasn't going out. I wasn't I wasn't collaborating with anybody. I wasn't working on like any huge projects or anything like that. And I feel like since moving into the van, I've done some of the most, some of my favorite stuff, at least, uh, you know, uh, that I've, that I've helped out with or contributed on so far. Uh, I don't know, it just, it feels like I'm able to be more creative and do more things and, uh, and work with people and, uh, and it's a lot better in that way, you know, it's a lot better, it's a lot better to be able to, to, to get out and like do the thing you love, you know, and, uh, and, and however you, however you have to live in order to make that a reality, you know, that's, that's what you have to do. And, uh, this is what I, this is what I sort of have to do. And this is what I love doing. It's not bad at all. So, you know, I was just too preoccupied with worrying about rent and worrying about what I was going to eat and stuff like that to, to really focus on going out and meeting people, working on projects and stuff like that. Whereas now I can actually, I can actually do that, and I can do that a lot. I can do that whenever I want. I can work on scripts. I can work on. I can go out and shoot something, and I can. I can edit something. Uh, you know, I've got a new laptop. I can edit stuff on. I, did, I don't have to use my other one. Um, you know, I'm taking online classes. I can. I can do work wherever I want, basically, which is awesome. And uh, you know, in the house, I just couldn't do that. And I imagine it's hard for a lot of people. All the, probably a lot of people that are paying rent here are just sort of in that same situation where they where they might feel stuck. You know, they might feel like they're sort of stuck and they want to do all these things, but they can't. They can't do these things because they feel like they're forced to live this sort of life where they have to pay rent, go to work, pay rent, go to work, pay rent, go to work. But what kind of life is that? You know, for me it wasn't. For me it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't enough at all. I don't understand the purpose of that. Um, so I'm going to get to now the uh, the answers that you guys put on my question, which was on my video, uh, what, I what I love about living in a van. You guys put some great answers up on there, and we're going to go over those real quick here. So the first uh, reply back was from Sky Wookie, who said his favorite thing to do, or their favorite thing to do in the van, is loving. Oh yeah, loving. Definitely loving. And the least favorite thing to do in the van was uh, not getting loving. So, uh, Sky Wookie's loving the loving. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure exactly what that means, but I like it, whatever it is. You know, wherever you gotta go to get your loving, that's where you gotta go. Get your loving. So, the next video reply was from Living My Life, who said uh, they load up the van with things they need and just leave. They check out an area where they want to go, and then they just go. Often quiet random trips, like heading to Hungary and Balaton. I hope I said that right. Uh, otherwise, going to the forest and just cooking out over an open fire. So that sounds pretty nice. Uh, Van Meister 94. Frequent replier. This, this guy's great. 
Uh, I like hanging out at the beach, but right now it's under a foot of snow and the lake is frozen solid. The thing he likes most about living in the van is the freedom to come and go as he pleases, and knowing that wherever he goes, his house follows. Very true. And then, uh, I replied actually to Van Meister's uh, comment, and I said, you know, definitely being free to move everything you own with the snap of your fingers is a nice feeling. And then somebody else commented to my response and said, or, to lose everything you own at the snap of your fingers is a bad feeling. And to that I say, you know, of course, yeah, there's a, you can think positively or you can think negatively. So, I mean, do whatever you want, but I'm going to stick with the positive side. So Jamie Bow said he likes to read, eat while watching DVDs on the portable, napping with the windows open, and just listening to the world spin. One thing he hates, though, is waking up at 4 a.m. with the shits and nothing to do about it. True story. <laughs> Sounds pretty rough. I haven't had that happen yet. Luckily, uh... The one time that I maybe might have had that happen, there was a porter potty like right right around the. There was some construction going on, so I just bolted right out of there. I'm sure, they had the porter potty like wired shut, you know, because they they lock them up at night. But there wasn't a lock on it; there was just a wire. So that was like a ticking time bomb. I had to like, I had to like un untangle this wire like as quickly as possible. Like, I don't know. It was definitely an experience, but yeah, I can see how that would be a. A pretty uh, crappy thing, and I, I wonder what Jamie Bo did about that situation. Liberty Freak says, finding a nice spot and hanging out and cooking there. Sounds pretty good. That's about the same as mine, actually. <laughs> Simple as it is. Uh, this was my favorite response from Pimple Queen 2, who said, Hiding in the Scottish Highlands where there's no phone signal, very little traffic, and not many people. Making a brew. Listening to the shipping forecast on Radio 4, the sound of the solar charger switching on when the sun comes up. Moderate or good. I don't know, I like that. It's very simply worded and very straight to the point, very descriptive with the short amount of words that they used. And uh, it definitely painted a, painted a pretty vivid image of that. If you're interested in listening to the shipping forecast that Pimple Queen's talking about here, here's a link to it. Uh, I was interested in what it would sound like. I was just kind of curious. and. Um, so Pimple Queen messaged me back and gave me a link to this sh to this uh, shipping forecast and says that as a child they liked the shipping forecast despite having no idea what it meant. And that's pretty much it for the uh, for the responses. There was a lot of great questions on there, but uh, not a lot of responses about why people love living in a van. But we can just take the amount of van dwellers that are on YouTube as a testament to how many are out there and and uh, you know. If it means anything, though, there's a lot of van dwellers out there that don't even have YouTube accounts. And, you know, we got to be completely honest with ourselves. There's nothing really, truly special about this. You know, I mean, anybody does. You know, anybody could do it. It's not like that huge of a deal. It's just like a person living in a van. And, uh, you know, I see people all the time that live in vans. Uh, especially on Great Highway. I mean, just parked throughout the entire city. There's people living in vans everywhere here. All different types of people. Uh, you know, and... And, you know, so, and a lot of them... Probably most of them aren't on YouTube. You know? So... You know, people like it. People like it a lot. Just as... It, just, you know, based on that. Based on the fact there's there's a lot of people doing it. And, you know, if it were It works. So it works for them. Um, back to the San Francisco rent situation thing. Not to, you know, I hate to get back to it, back on this sort of crappy topic of San Francisco rent. But on the more positive side, uh, my friend Colleen Cummins, who's a photojournalist from Oakland, uh, she's got this great blog going on right now called Why We, Why we Left. And uh, she's actually, she took pictures of me for it and they're up on the website check it out please it's it's great um and basically it's just about uh san francisco price outs the changing uh the way that the tech sort of is changing the city the way that the city is just changing in general and she's interviewed people and she's taken pictures of uh a handful of different people and you know it's it's really interesting all their responses are really great and the photography is amazing if you get a chance check out her commuter uh, her computer blog too is really great. Yeah guys, that's pretty much it for today and uh, just for a few other things um, Got some got a new video up on the Polarbs channel uh, If you want to check it out, it's 
I like it. It's called uh, Happens, and there's a link right here. Also, I helped. I recently helped a friend out with a video for a 48-hour competition in Missouri called Sato 48, and that video is called The Third Janitor, and it's not online yet, but keep an eye out for it. I will post you at a later date, and you can check it out. It should be pretty funny. Um, and it's kind of a neat idea, too. It's like uh, we, you know... It's like Sado 48 is, is a, a competition, basically, where you have to make a movie within 48 hours. And uh, so getting footage from, like, a different part of the world, whether it's, you know, an hour away or San Francisco or, like, China, you know, it's, it's pretty uh, incredible to, like, throw that in there. Because you're, you're supposed to film everything within the 48 hours, edit everything within the 48 hours, make the music in the 48 hours, uh, you know, even think of the idea within that 48 hours, so... So, but I'll keep you posted on that. It should be a pretty interesting little flick. And that's pretty much it for now. Um, I guess to depart, I will ask, um, what is your favorite movie so far of 2015? For me, mine would be, I don't know, it's really hard to pick. Probably Clouds of Sils Maria. If you want to see it, check it out. There's a trailer below. I will see you guys later. Take it easy. Stay cool. Um, don't eat too many Reese's Pieces. And Oh, yeah. There's another video, too. Check out this video. It's really, 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 really strange, but I helped out with it in terms of filming, editing, and some other things. But check it out. It's really, it's, it's a neat one. It's called uh, Argumentative Rhetoric. Here's the link for that. It's my buddy Marcelo's channel. And there's another video that we shot on there called Contrived Materials, which is also really weird. Uh, stay tuned. There's going to be a lot more videos coming up in the near future. Um, you know, it's, it'll be a mix of vlogs and probably skits. What I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to make some skits that are edited kind of like these videos. Like, they're, they're kind of fun, you know. You know, they're like little short films, basically, but they're centered around, like, living in a van. and sort of the ridiculous, like, uh, exaggerated stuff that goes on. And then I'll probably also make uh, vlogs, which will be, you know, which will be a lot more normal. The vlogs will be a lot more, uh, just like regular videos. Like, I might even do, if you guys would be interested, let me know what you think about this. Uh, so I might do these skits, right? And then I might do vlogs every day. I might make a new vlog every day. But the catch is, if I do that... They're not going to be edited like these videos. They're going to be sort of very choppy. They're going to be very uh, slice of life. They're going to be very, like, I'm just going to carry the camera around, shoot, like, maybe a minute here, you know, a couple hours go by. I shoot, like, a 30 seconds here. A couple hours go by. I shoot, like, five seconds here. But I would do the, one of those every day. So you might not get, like, it might not be uh, so much of a learning experience or something, but it would be like a, you're just seeing what I'm doing, basically, throughout the day. And if you think that would be interesting, let me know, and I'll do those videos instead. So, now you know. Now you know. I have I have told you the future, and now the future will play out. Maybe maybe it won't even be uh you may, maybe it won't be like that at all. Maybe uh maybe a tree will fall down on the van right now, and I'll get crushed. Uh -huh.